What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Golf Planet channel and today I'm going to talk to you about the most debated subject in golf over the last year, distance. Now Bryson DeChambeau won the US Open at Wingfoot Golf Club only last week and that has sparked this up again thinking, should we roll back the ball, should we change something about the golf courses? Bryson DeChambeau gained about 30 to 40 yards in about three months with this massive transformation and has got all the amateurs thinking, can we do this? Now what if I could tell you right now that there's a training aid that most professionals use that you probably haven't heard about that can increase your swing speed by at least five to 10 miles an hour in just four weeks. Let's get right into the video. So, super speed training. I'm sure you've got a lot of questions right now and are probably a little bit skeptical of the product itself. So let me give you a quick rundown. Super speed training system is a process that can increase your swing speed by a minimum of 5% in six weeks if you follow their training program. They have a variety of products to choose from, but we're gonna focus on the most popular model, which is the set of three. These set of three look like golf clubs, but it's a bit of a twist. They basically have no driver head, but what super speed focuses on is over speed training. So with this set of three, you have a green club, which is 20% lighter than a normal driver, a blue club, which is 10% lighter than a normal driver, and then a red club, which is 5% heavier than a normal driver weight. Still a bit skeptical? I would be too, to be honest. But next time you're at a golf tournament or watching the golf on TV, try and have a look in the golf pros bags when they're on the range, because you'll probably see a odd looking golf club in there, or maybe even three. This is because Superspeed has over 600 tour pros using their training aids, from the likes of Phil Mickelson, Ian Poulter, Billy Horschel, Martin Keimer, Paul Casey, John Rahm, Bryson DeChambeau, Matt Kuchar, and many, many more. It's worth noting on the long drive tour as well, we have Joe Miller and other long drive professionals using it, which just shows how important this training aid is. So it's tour proven, and for only £199 in RRP, this is half the price of a brand new driver that you'll get that you think can increase your swing speed and distance. But can it really increase your swing speed and increase your distance between all clubs in your bag in just a matter of weeks? Well, you're in luck because I've been using the training aid for six weeks now, and I'm here to show you the results. So what specific exercises or movements did I do in the last six weeks to help me gain speed and distance? So when I opened the lovely box with the Superspeed product in it, I was instructed to go to the Superspeed website where you have all the training information that you need from level one to level five. It's full of information and I thoroughly recommend you go on and have a look at what they provide here. So let me run down what I did over the last six weeks. So three times a week or roughly 12 times a month, I had 39 swings on my particular training session. This took roughly six to eight minutes, depending on how quick you were, but it could take longer. Each swing, you're supposed to be swinging it as fast as you can, so it's supposed to be pretty difficult for these six to eight minutes. These 39 swings are divided between the three golf training aids you're given. I'll put the data up on the screen now as the specifics, but as you can see, you do a little bit more with the green, but you do the same type of movements with the blue and the red as well. You do three on each side, so right-handed swingers, then you do left-handed swing as well, and you change the grip each time. Now what's recommended with these swing speed training aids is you have a swing speed monitor that shows how fast you're swinging it with each club. It's important here to have a swing speed monitor that monitors how far you swing it, but not with the ball itself. Now, Super Speed have one online and it's perfect, but if you don't have one of them, it's not too important. But remember, you're trying to swing it as fast as you can every single time because your body can get into a sense of normality and actually not swing it as 110% like you're supposed to be doing. Now, a bit of background before I show you my results and how I got on with this six week period. I have a pretty decent swing speed. It's always been around the mid 110s, maybe low 110s. And when I try and max out, as you can see in the Joe Miller video that was released recently, I get around 120 to 122, I would say. So I'm not lacking in distance, but everyone always would like that extra bit of swing speed. 
as it says on a lot of data, the higher the swing speed, the more likely you are to be better at golf. So it's always good to have a little bit more distance. So in this six week period, to begin with, I recorded my swing speed on the Skytrack launch monitor at Knoll Park Golf Club. At the end of this six week period, I did exactly the same with the same driver, the same golf ball. So all the data that I was receiving is completely accurate. So as mentioned, to begin with, I went to Knoll Park Golf Club and recorded my data on the Skytrack launch monitor. I'll put some highlights on the screen now, but my average for hitting 15 drives with a bit of a warm up was about 115 miles an hour, 115.2 to be exact. My ball speed was a bit inconsistent on the day, but I'll give you a max ball speed that I have, which was 174 miles an hour. So if we're looking at PGA Tour levels for swing speed, I come just about on the guideline of Justin Rose and Jordan Spieth. So pretty fast, but I know I could get faster. Now onto the training, and one thing I've really loved about this is it's actually training, it's actually exercise, and it's pretty strenuous. Now I'll be honest, as a 24 year old bloke, I didn't really expect to be sore or anything after six to 10 minutes of golf exercise, but the day after the first week, I was, I was pretty sore for all of it. I'm hitting 39 swings as fast as you possibly can, and doing that on both sides, of your left and right, I'm activating muscles I don't really use that much. So I was pretty sore for the first week. This quickly subsided and nevertheless it was enjoyable either way, but it was quite interesting to see that for a training aid. Now if you are a bit limited physically, definitely don't be discouraged by this. Superspeed offer many products of the main three sets in all ages, both genders that will be catered exactly to your needs. As well as this, as you can see in the first level one, they put in the stomp which can easily make you turn a lot more in usual swings and can make you swing a little bit faster. So you'll definitely get a benefit out of this. If you're worried that the super speed training may be a bit strenuous on a certain part of your body, well then don't worry. Super speed offer a dynamic warm up section on the training website, which has all you need for every body part to make sure you don't injure yourself whilst training. Warm up the range of motion in both a clockwise and counterclockwise fashion for your ankles. With any sort of training, everyone gives excuses, much like going to the gym. But with this, you really can't give an excuse for doing it three times a week. It's six to 10 minutes long and it can be done more or less anywhere. From the driving range to your garden and much, much more. One thing I've also that I did actually struggle with was putting 110% into every single swing during these six weeks. I particularly struggled with the left-handed swings. I noticed, especially on the heavier club, that after swinging, I didn't feel that I put in 100%, although I actually thought I did beforehand. Now, what I would do if I were to do this again, which I will be doing, is buying one of those swing speed monitors on the Super Speed website. That way you can monitor every single swing and get actual tangible data, which is perfect for this type of like training routine. Now, along these six weeks as well, I obviously played golf on the golf course. And for the first few weeks, I didn't really notice anything too, too massive. But midway through, I started noticing very inconsistent rises in my distance along my whole golf bag. So for driver, there were a few holes that I would usually hit at a certain distance, about 300 yards or so, but there were some times that I would be hitting at about 320, maybe even 330, which is massive for me. Now for seven iron and six iron as well, kind of around that gap range, I was noticing massive increases. I was hitting at about 190 to 200 yards on the course. I usually get that data sometimes on the range, but never on the course. This is obviously great because I'm getting an increase in distance, but playing on the course and having a set number in your head and then air mauling it about 20 yards past it never ends well. But nevertheless, it was a sign that it was working for my swing. Now, six weeks flew by with my training. It was a lot of fun. And actually for about the last two weeks, I didn't get out onto the course that much. So I was really excited to see what data I was going to be getting when I did my final testing. So I went back to Knoll Park Golf Club with the exact same metrics to see what the Skytrack launch monitor will say. Now I want to reassure everyone that the data in this video has not been tampered with at all. I have not touched the Skytrack to make it seem like the swing speed's faster, you can't do that anyway, or to make the distance further. I can assure you that the person who wants me to get the best results out of this video is me. I was so excited to try this super speed and I was really happy with the results. So on the final day of testing, I had a few warm-up swings, got stretched out, and then got into the 15 driver swings. Getting straight into it, I immediately noticed that my beginning swings, the ones that are usually the slowest, had an immediate increase to my average swing speed. They were coming in at around 117 to 118 miles an hour. It's already quite a big increase. 
going through the 15 driver swings, it was very clear to me that I had a massive increase. Now, when I stepped on it, like I did in the first initial stage of testing and hit it out the middle, my swing speed was absolutely ridiculous. My max swing speed topped out at 128 miles an hour. Now, this swing speed itself would beat the likes of Cameron Champ at 127 and Bryson DeChambeau at just a little bit lower. Now, unfortunately, that isn't my average swing speed, so I'm not in the, in the ranks of them yet but I'm still doing pretty good. My average swing speed through 15 driver swings came in at 122.9 miles an hour and my fastest ball speed came in at 184 miles an hour. Now that number I know can be increased just by me hitting it out the middle because if you think the smash factor of 128 of 1.5 can get to about 190 miles an hour which to be honest I never thought I could ever get there. So I'm sure you're wondering now, what is it that I'm going to do next? Do I continue doing the same process? Do I just stop? What is it that you're supposed to do? Now, super speed have a very clear process and levels of staging that you're supposed to do after a certain amount of time. And this is where I would move on to the next stage. Now, if I stopped the training, gave up, for some reason just got bored, then it's likely that my swing speed would plateau and probably more likely than not decrease a little bit and go back to what it was beforehand. So for me, obviously, I'm going to keep going through the winter and I'm going to go through the stages and also base this with my strength training as well to try and get the most increase that I can throughout the winter months. I'm as surprised as you with the results, but I'm over the moon by what I've seen and I cannot believe this has happened in such a short amount of time. I cannot recommend the three-piece super speed set enough. If you're looking for a golf driver, a golf anything to do with golf, be sure to go onto the super speed website and have a look at this. This will help your golf game more than any golf club ever can. For the winter months, this is exactly what amateur golfers need, and I will definitely be using it for stage two and stage three. So guys, that brings us to the end of the video, and as you can see, I'm at a different location to where I have been for most of this video. That's because this has been about three weeks in between the last bit of filming and to now. And that's because I thought it'd be relevant to give a little bit more of a lifestyle update for this type of training. Now, I know I said previously that there's no excuse for not doing this, six to eight minute thing three times a week and I will put my hands up and say I haven't done that. Uh, over the last three weeks I've been on holiday, I've been a bit busy and genuinely I've just been a bit lazy so I didn't train for about two of those three and a half weeks. Now I said previously that if you did this your swing speed would revert back to normal. I'm actually completely wrong in saying this. If you do at least up to level two, you will not lose any of the speed training if you stop it. Now, I've only done level one, but I only did stopped for about two weeks. So I didn't lose any of my swing speed. You can see in recent videos that I'm still up there in around the 122 and 123 miles an hour. And I will continue and now start level two and hopefully get a little bit faster. There are also a few myths that I just want to completely dispel. And the first one is the kind of distance with accuracy myth. People think if you gain tons and tons of distance like Bryson, you will then start all going all over the shot because if you hit it a little bit left with faster swing speed, you'll go even further left and you'll miss tons more fairways. Now, I'm gonna completely say this is not true with super speed training. I've gained about 10% of distance and you'd think I would lose a bit of accuracy if you believe in that myth. I have not at all. I will put my fairways found from the last, let's say, 10 rounds of four super speed up on the screen now. I've got this data from Golf Shake, and from the last five rounds, I will put my data on the screen now as well. So as you can see, I've gone down by about, well, I haven't gone down. I've got, I've, from the data, I've lost about 0.25%, which is not admissible in any way. It's exactly the same, and it's more just down to my game. So you're not gonna lose any accuracy by doing this. In fact, it could actually help improve your swing and improve your accuracy too. The last thing which I mentioned earlier in this video is that my 7-iron, my driver, were going unbelievable distances. So I'd be hitting a 7-iron that I thought would be a certain distance and it would go 20 yards past, aim all the green, and it would be somewhere that I wouldn't want to be. Now, what I would recommend and what Super Speed would rec recommend as well is when you start noticing this, wait until, let's say, the end of level one training or the end of the stage and then do what is called a gap test. I'm sure you're familiar as to what this is. This is where you go on a launch monitor or something that can record your distances and you get a complete set distance for every single club in your bag. Not just your driver, every single club in your bag, apart from the putter, because they're all gonna increase. It's not just a driver that's gonna go crazy. And I can show you now, my seven iron roughly before this was 180 yards. I'll happily say I've done a gap test in a long time before this. So I thought it was about 175 to 180 yards. 
Now, my average, and I did this on the SkyTrack launch monitor, is about 192 yards, which is absolutely massive, and I'm over the moon with it because it means it makes long golf courses a lot easier. So if you go and do this and you've got distances going all over the place, the best thing you can do is either go to your local pro, local driving range that has either Top Tracer, SkyTrack, Top, like anything that they can do to measure your distances with all your clubs, and you can get that kind of average figure for every single club in the bag. This is what I'd recommend with kind of every single level for super speed training. So guys, if you enjoyed this video today, make sure you leave a like. This video took a lot of time and effort and as enjoyable as for me, I'm hopeful that it was enjoyable for you to watch and you've learned a lot out of it as well. Overspeed training is super important for gaining distance and distance, as I'm sure you're aware, has never been more important in the game of golf. If we get 200 likes in this video, I will continue this long drive series and see how fast I can really get with my swing speed over the winter. If you guys haven't subscribed, make sure you go down below and hit that button and turn notifications on to keep up to date with all our challenges and equipment reviews in the future. I'll see you guys on the next video.